Good Sunday morning, friends, and welcome as we gather once again for church this Sunday morning. It's been a long time since we've been together. We've been on the road, we've been traveling, doing live events, and it has prevented me from joining you in this manner. So here we are. We are beginning uh, December. We're looking for Christmas. We're looking for celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so here in the first Sunday of Advent, I ask you to join me. Join me for church this morning. But collect for this morning as, as printed in the older versions of the Book of Common Prayer and in my 1713 Bible, which you, which you see upon the screen, says this to bring us into worship. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility. That in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to life immortal 
through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. In the wisdom of the authors of the Book of Common Prayer, they have, they have instructed that this is to be read each of the Sundays of Advent. Uh, again, this, this puts our hearts and our minds in, in light of, of what we are about in this, in this season. You join me as we go to the Lord in prayer this Sunday morning. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we come to you wanting to know more about who you are, wanting to realize your majesty, your greatness, wanting to know you. And we come confessing our sins. We come humbling ourselves before you. Uh, You are the great God that has created all, and you have made yourself known to us and provided a way to know us, for us to know you through your Son, Jesus Christ. So this day as we gather together, may we turn our hearts and minds towards you, especially in this season of Christmas, in this season of Advent, as we look forward to your second coming as we celebrate your first coming. And all these things we pray in the name of Christ. Amen.
we're going to talk a little bit uh, about what Advent is as we, as we go through uh, today's service. But I also want to read for you the other scriptures that are, that are given for, for this day. In, in, in the church, we're given uh, each Sunday, we're given the epistle. We're given the gospel to read. The epistle for today is Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, as if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. The gospel reading for today comes from St. Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 14. And when they drew nigh unto Bethlehem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and setting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. As we go to the Lord in prayer uh, again this Sunday morning, we we want to remember uh, many, many prayer requests that that, that I know that, that you have. Uh, those that that I've been been aware made aware of, uh, as we come into the Christmas season, this is this is always a, a, a joyous time. I uh, can remember and, and watch the children as they as they run around anticipating uh, what what the gifts may be and, and and such. But it's also it's also a, a time of of grieving, a time of of remembering loss. And this is this is not just those that have lost their loved ones within the past the past weeks, but, and not even the past year, but, but the, the loss of, of, of someone so close to us, uh, stays, stays with us. Uh, for many, for many of you, for many people that we're aware of, this is the first Christmas, 
uh, that you'll be you'll be celebrating without without your wife, without your husband, without your children, uh, your mothers, your fathers, uh, and 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 such. And and so so we want to we want to lift you up in in prayer at at this time. There are also those who realize that their their future is is somewhat short with with the diseases that they've been been diagnosed with, uh, and and we want to remember. We want to remember those. Uh, if I mention some by name, I would I would want you to remember Jim Hamilton. I would want to ask you to pray for for Richard Beeler, for Chris Crosby, uh, for our friend Dara Lee uh, suffering with with leukemia, just just recently diagnosed. We want to we want to lift these up. We want to ask for for healing. We want to ask for comfort. We want to ask for for peace. Uh, if there's one that I want to mention this morning in, in, in a recent loss, we just did uh, the funeral for, for, for Doc Muzzy. Uh, so I'd ask you to be in, in prayer for, for Elaine uh, during, during this, this Christmas season. Be in prayer, but also be ready to reach out, to put an arm around, to comfort, to, to engage in conversation, to listen uh, to those that are, that are grieving. Allow them to grieve and comfort them by your presence and by listening and sharing with them the the love of Christ. So as we as we go to prayer, I ask that you that you lift up those requests that you have if you're comfortable posting them in in the comments on this video and don't be afraid to pray for yourself. Uh at this time of year we all we all have have needs and if Christianity is anything, it is a personal relationship between ourselves and Christ. So let's, let's lift that to the Lord at this time. Would you join me in prayer? Again, gracious Heavenly Father, as we, as we worship you this morning, we, we do bring our request to you. We are uh, with heavy hearts uh, thinking about, about friends that, that are not with us now, for, for loved ones, for family. And we ask, Father, that, that you guide and direct, that you provide the healing and you provide the comfort. And Father, we ask that you provide for us the, the direction to go, to give, to comfort, to lift up uh, those, that are, those that are hurting. Father, may we, may we go, go without fear and may we, may we be your voice uh, to, 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 our, to our friends in this time. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind may moan,
Well, we're here to, to, to celebrate Advent. And, and for many of us, we come from traditions where, where Advent is, is a very common thing. But even in that, I, I think that we often, we often have misunderstandings uh, about what we are celebrating in Advent. And, and certainly we have some misunderstandings historically about when did Advent start? Uh, is this something that started with the early church? Is this something that started a, l- a little later on? So I want to I, I want to want to dive into some of those some of those things. I want us to to understand, as we saw from from the scriptures that are printed in our in our Book of Common Prayer, that that there are there it, it's not really a, a Christmas scripture that we read this morning. It's more of a uh, uh, glorifying, glorifying Christ, glorifying who who he who he is, and and that's that's kind of the theme of of of, of what I want to say, and, and and what I think that our that our Bible wants us wants us to understand. Advent, Advent is a Latin word uh, that is uh, Adventus. It is a translation of a Greek word parousia. Parousia means. Uh, means coming. It means a, a presence. It can be used both in a in a secular sense and in and in a in a religious sense. And so, typically in the New Testament, what we're seeing when we when we discuss parousia, we're seeing it in in Paul's letters, and it's referring to the second coming of Christ. Uh, it's given to us in terms of a a majesty or a king coming into into his kingdom, and those within the kingdom are, are prepared to go out and meet him and escort him back in to, 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 to do judgment uh, upon, upon the city that they, uh, or the state that, that, that they are from. Uh, and, and so Advent is, is meaning that. Uh, about the fourth century, we see, we see the Catholic Church uh, instituting Advent about the time that, uh, that December 25th is 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 set as the birth of Christ, and again we don't know exactly when the birth of Christ happened. We can use some means of deduction and, and say, okay, it could could have been could have been in the winter. Uh, it could have been could have been in December. Very 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 logically uh, could have been, but a, a decision was made that this is when when we're going to celebrate uh, we're going to celebrate Christ's birth, and so. Just like with Lent, that is preceding Easter, uh, and Easter is a set holiday because it being uh, associated with Passover. Uh, there, with with Christmas, originally they would have they would have forty days of preparation for for Christmas. By the time we get to the sixth and the seventh century, we're going to see that cut down to to one month and and primarily four four Sundays. By the time we get to our time that we all reenact uh, the, the, the the Revolutionary War era, the French and Indian War, uh, before that, so late late uh, uh, 16th, 17th, 18th century, we're going to see we're going to see this refined a little a little bit further. The 1662 Book of Common Prayer, which is what I had on the screen earlier, uh, and reprinted in 1713, is is going to divide this Advent into two Sundays dealing with the second coming of our Lord and then two Sundays dealing with the birth of our Lord or the incarnation of the Lord. And then there is a fifth service that is, is to, be, uh, to be on Christmas Day. And we will, we will do, Lord willing, uh, all of these uh, as, we, as, we, as we move along. In understanding what we're celebrating here with with our Advent and and doing it in in an 18th century, 18th century manner, it is it is that we need to we need to introduce introduce Christ, Christ Christ as as the coming King, as the one coming to uh, bring judgment on on the world. This is this is what we're seeing in 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 the second coming of Christ. And in those first few chapters of Revelation, we are going to see that, that Christ is described to us 
in in a way that 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 we really can't miss or we shouldn't miss uh, the glory of Him, uh, giving us giving us a a picture, as it were, of of Christ. John the Apostle, writing there in Revelation, is also the author of of the Gospel of John, and and in John chapter one, the Gospel. Uh, starting in, in verse 6, I'd like to, like to read this for you. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Now John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see that as we as we come into into Christmas, we we have to see the whole Christ, not just not just a baby in in a manger. We have to see who he who he is. What is his task in in coming to us? Why was he born as a person? Why was he born as a man? Why did he live? Why did he die? Why did he resurrect? And why did he is he is he coming again? Advent, preparation. So we so we must be we must be prepared. Uh, the the scripture in Matthew talks about that triumphal entry. Coming in, coming into Jerusalem, and 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 this is quoting the Old Testament prophets, so that when the people saw Jesus come in, they should understand who He is. Preparedness. Are, were they prepared for Him? No, no, they, they they really weren't. This is what this is what John is telling us in the beginning of of his gospel, that that though that though he came into the world, the world did not, did not know him. As I make these comments about, uh, about Christ coming into the world uh, and, and, and Christmas Day being, being set by a, a church council or, or, or some, there, there are those that I know that are, that are going, to, going to say that this, this Christianity that, that we're, we're, we're talking about this Christ that we're believing in and asking others to believe in is is, is nothing nothing but a a, a fiction. Uh, we have we have stolen uh, an identity from from others. We 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 ask you to be to be prepared, but but yet yet there's nothing there's nothing true in in this. And and one that that I like to. Uh, uh, I like to, to, to use as, as an example from, from our early 20th century is, is, is C.S. Lewis. And, and C.S. Lewis being, being a, a prominent atheist, uh, by the time he's, uh, he, he's in his 30s, 32, when he, when he does finally accept the, the truth of, of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, the truth of Christianity, but leading up to that point, he was, he was an established uh, established atheist. Once he became a Christian, he loses some of his promotions uh, there at Oxford. He he, he becomes becomes a laughing stock to to some, but but to to us that believe, we we look back and we see what is it what is it that 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 he saw? How did he prepare himself? And and there's a there's a conversation that 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 went on in in C. S. Lewis' life, and and this is. This is pertinent for us in our being prepared. Uh, again, knowing who Christ is, knowing, knowing who, who God is. 
C.S. Lewis, of course, being a, being a philosopher and discussing things far far above us, uh, was was discussing with a, with a Mr. Hugo Tyson and uh, and Tolkien, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, that uh, that you're familiar with, and 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 they they proposed to to Lewis something that I want to propose to those that would be uh, somewhat skeptical of of the faith that I'm asking you asking you to to accept and what they what they said to him was 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 this it said if you if you admit if you admit the idea of a sacrifice now they they didn't use christ's name at at this point but if but if but if i had asked you to to accept christ uh, in a pagan story you wouldn't you wouldn't object at all and, and in fact the the quote is now that that Dyson and Tol- Tolkien showed me uh, what was this, that if I met the idea of sacrifice in a pagan story, I didn't mind it at all. Again, if I met it, these are the words of Lewis, if I met the idea of a God sacrificing, sacrificing himself to himself, I liked it very much and was mysteriously moved by it. Uh, again, by the idea of a dying and, and receiving God. Similarly, uh, if I met it in a way that was any way except in the Gospels. The reason was that in pagan stories, I was prepared to feel the myth as profound and suggestive of meanings beyond my grasp, even though I could not say in cold prose what it meant. Lewis then says, Now the story of Christ is simply true. It is a, and, and I use this word carefully, a myth that is, that is true. A myth is, 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 is merely a, a, a telling of, of a story. And we have these all the way, all the way through, through our history. It's a myth working on us the same way as the others, but with this tremendous difference. The tremendous difference between Christ and, and other stories of dying and resurrecting gods is that this one truly happened. And this is the thought that, that, that arrested C.S. Lewis's mind and, and heart. And then within a very short period, uh, again, as, as a 32-year-old young man, he surrenders to Christ. He prays a prayer that is, he said, he was one of the, one of the harshest, most, most reluctant converts in, in the world, but he saw that Christianity was, was true. He prepared himself by believing. This is why we have in, in, in the Scripture, again in the Gospel of John, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is, this is the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel that this narrative, this story of, of Christ, the story of Christ coming as, as a baby, still God, still man, living without sin, being sacrificed on, on our behalf. This is, this is why we, we, must, we must believe this. And we and we must strip away the the externals, the things that would that would distract us. And may we see the Christ of Calvary. May we see the Christ of the Gospels. Because as Christ said there in the end of the Gospel of John, that, that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Everything that you've heard from me, the Father is is telling me. And he says, I and the am, and the Father are one. So in knowing Christ, we know God the Father, and this is the only way that we can, we can know Him. So the question at the end of, end of this, this service is, are we prepared? Are we prepared for that, for that second coming? Have we accepted by faith the first coming, the works of Christ and who, who He is? This is something that happened, and this is something that we must believe in.
So I invite you on this journey as we go through the, the other Sundays of, of, of Advent to open our understanding, further prepare ourselves, because Christ is coming back again. You know, there are those that, that for 2,000 years have been looking at the coming of the second coming of Christ. There are those that, that have been expecting his coming again. There are those that, that have looked at the world around them and they've seen the wars and rumors of wars. They've seen the things that, 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 that Christ predicted. They, they've seen what they believe to be the, the fulfillment, fulfillment of, of, of prophecy. But, but, yet, but yet Christ is, has, has delayed. The, 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 the time of his coming is, is, not, is not yet. And, and, and one illustration that I, I, want to, I want to leave you with is, is one that, that, uh, that my daughter mentioned, mentioned to, me, to me today. She says that, 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 that she, may, she may leave the room and, and say to, to, to any number of, of the children there in that, in that room, these are the things that I want you to do. And I expect when I come back that they'll be finished. And it's amazing to see that, that in, in, those, in those little, little minds, in those little hearts, that they become more interested and more, uh, there's more anxiety about when is he coming back than the work that we are to do. And that would be a picture that I would want to paint for us as we, as we draw this service to a close, is our faith must be in Christ. Our lives must reflect the work that he has for us to do. His coming will take care of itself. And we should be vigilant. And we should not miss when it, when it happens. But let's be about the work that he has us to do. I want to thank you for joining with me this Sunday morning. And I look forward to, to being with you in the weeks to come. Let us pray. Lord, our, our Father, we, we do uh, again ask that, that you guide and direct our hearts, our minds uh, throughout this Christmas season, that you, that you lead us in the paths of, of righteousness, truly, as, as the scripture has said, that you, that you, you put us in the place of, of service, that you put us in the place of the tasks that you have for us. Father, that even before that, you help our faith, you help our belief, you help us as we prepare to celebrate your coming. Father, be with us is our prayer, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.